We're back. I had to record this three or four times, the intro. That's why I'm steamrolling it through. You won't have known this if you listen to this right now, but unfortunately, my MacBook Air is on its last legs. It's just about dying, on the way to dying, and I'm thankful that it's only dying now because I just managed to secure myself full-time employment. Because usually whenever, you, whenever you're out of work or you, your money's a bit tight, usually that's when stuff around you starts breaking. You're like, oh my God, if there's a God up there, you are playing games on me. But finally, thankfully, it broke just about or it's, it's kind of approaching its breaking point just as I'm, you know, getting my feet under the table at a new full-time gig that I finally managed to secure in the last couple of weeks. So I'm over the moon for that. So nice, happy okay with it because i know even if it breaks i know there's income coming in i kind of pay for it of course i can pay for it now i've got savings but no one wants to spend their savings to recover a macbook because if you know think about macbooks and especially macbook airs you think it's one issue you 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 take it to go get repaired and then you find out there's seven other issues and then suddenly you go from spending a hundred quid to spending nearly 300 and you're thinking to yourself should I just bin this and brick it and get a Dell or what you know what I mean it's a real mad conundrum so I'm thankful I'm over the moon that hasn't broken on me just yet um if I'm not mistaken I think the issue at hand is the battery the battery is dead essentially I have to keep the computer plugged in in order for it to stay awake if it's not plugged in it doesn't stay awake so I think that's the issue at hand if I get the battery replaced then I'm pretty sure I should be in a much better place just need to get the battery replaced and I'll be fine but again that costs money that costs time to you know be about the computer and then get a little covering one for the time being so now I'm in a much better place I'm thankful and the timing for this couldn't be better and I can now get it fixed going forward as I mentioned briefly, um, I finally managed to secure myself uh, full-time employment, which is pretty good considering I've been looking for the best part of what, under a year. Um, for the most part, the idea prior to COVID, obviously everyone's changes and dreams and whatnot has completely changed off the back of this pandemic. But the idea of what I was trying to do prior was obviously, you know, I was in a good position with this podcast. The things are going really well and I was really push pumping out the videos and making sure I was recording at least three times per week and just banging stuff out uploading stuff on Patreon all the time and then of course on the side as well I was DJing mostly I'd say in any given week sometimes three times per week which is bloody amazing it allowed me to improve my level really good and obviously it allowed me to have a little bit of extra income on top of that it's not much it can range between 50 to 100 pound but still those little extra bits on top it definitely goes a long way in terms of you looking in the month thinking wow I've got a lot more money than I usually have and I didn't realize at the time that it was me going super hard at the podcast and super hard with DJing and then obviously thinking about um, hosting exhibitions and doing other bits and bobs and putting on parties I was looking okay cool there's always avenues that I can kind of explore my creative yearnings that could also kind of help me bolster my financial position going forward but then of course COVID happens and suddenly those main I won't say main but especially the DJing part and maybe the podcasting part for the most part because I was trying to focus on making sure I can find a gig were basically undercut for me the podcast is a thing mostly because I found, not sure if you guys are the same, but I found whenever I've got other things in real life that I'm kind of worrying about that I want to get right, it sometimes can affect the work that I do, whether it's working nine to five, whether it's, you know, creative stuff I do outside of it. It can make you like... I don't know, it can sometimes affect your drive and your motivation. Obviously, it's not the best way to do it because I think when you're in like a really bad position in your life, it probably is the best time to kind of, you know... um check yourself deeply into whatever art project that you're doing because usually your best work comes around at times but I found for me personally it was just a struggle to get that going um so that kind of affected it in in one in one space and also I just went to focus and make sure I got the gig sorted out and I had that position all nicely buttoned up but has to be said for anybody out there who's also struggling to find gigs don't take it personally it's not just you it's everybody um I work mostly within like what what would you say the marketing industry side of things and I have to be honest like even though I've got pretty decent experience I found it incredibly difficult to get a job incredibly it's just so hard don't even get me started on like normal customer service stuff like even working in retail that's like you know those jobs are really few and far between I think the real kind of amazing point for you to have got one of those kind of jobs to kind of pay the bills and make sure you keep the lights on was at the beginning of the pandemic when everyone was I think there's a rush to find people just to fill the gigs because obviously they didn't have enough people in the stores to fulfill demand everyone was buying toilet paper that rush in the beginning if you didn't get in there it's pretty hard to get in there now because now you know for the most part the ones who are the ones who have the experience are getting a priority 
the places now have kind of, you know, gotten into their groove and their routine. Most places don't really need too many staff on the shop floor to make it work, especially with the, you know, with the with the kind of a decrease in footfall in general I've seen outside. So I think that's greatly affecting it. But in terms of a nine to five working in the office, they're really difficult to come by nowadays, mostly partly well i guess mostly due to the pandemic and also because of the changing needs for a company now you don't need to be in the office anymore it effectively opens up employers um ability to go and hire you know far uh what should you call it? Far better or far better? No, a broader range of candidates, right? They can interview more people. They don't need to just interview people specifically who live in a city where their head office is based. They can go and kind of cast the net far and wide, which allows them obviously to get better candidates. But obviously, in that respect, also increases the competition for you and I. So it makes it far more difficult for you and I to find those positions. But if you persevere and you just keep on keeping on, unfortunately, um, getting a job is similar to like doing push ups and sit ups and stuff in order for you to get nice arms arms and abs and whatever you don't know when the breaking point is going to come when you're suddenly going to cross over and you're going to start seeing the gains but the moment you stop the moment you break that momentum is a moment the gains go away forever so you just have to keep applying you have to keep checking and hopefully you'll get there but honestly don't be discouraged because i can legitimately say hand on heart it legitimately took me like a year to get this gig that i've got at the moment and if i'm honest it took me maybe I don't know, it was up to maybe the only the last, no, it was up to maybe eight months, 10 months when I started getting replies. There was a time when I was applying where my application was just going into deep space. I wasn't even getting acknowledgement sometimes that I sent my application in. You'd be like, did what, did I write the cover letter wrong? What, do you know what I mean? You didn't even know what was going on, but I'd imagine that there's so much, like, I'd imagine most places are so inundated with applications. There are basically too many good candidates and not enough jobs around that they just don't have time to get back to everybody. Do you know what I mean? So sometimes you feel as if like you have the experience necessary to do X, Y, or Z job. And honestly, this competition is just too far, too much. Like I'm saying, like I've got fairly good experience. I've done some fairly decent stuff along my kind of working career and I'm finding it difficult. I can only imagine what people below me in terms of experience and knowledge base and also above me are feeling right now. So I'm I'm thankful that happened like i said um I, i've never really been the biggest proponent um of kind of uh sharing this sort of stuff it's not really necessary it's not important but just in terms of what we're going through in the pandemic it's um i think it's important to basically let people know that you know those struggles that you're going through you're not alone everyone's kind of going through them together and unfortunately this is just the way of the world at the moment do you know what i mean so it is no real point to kind of beat yourself up and get all down in the dumps because effectively this is happening to literally everybody and i'd imagine it kind of varies in different um industries i think obviously in the marketing side of things there's just you know for the most part most of those jobs are bullshit jobs anyway you don't really need people to sit there and monitor facebook accounts and share you know funny tweets on flipping whatever it may be or funny bits of content on your social media feed there's a bit of a nonsense job to have something specifically sitting down and doing that role so if anything if you're a big company and you've got some you know wits about you you just get the marketing manager who's got experience to basically fulfill the role of doing the community's manager side of things the social media side of things and their job itself do you know what i mean you just get them to do free and maybe bump their salary up a little bit and that's way to get around it so if you're a if you're kind of a specialist social media manager you're going to find it difficult if you're a specialist community manager you're going to find it difficult but if you're able to kind of maybe be a jack of all trades and kind of you know roll your sleeves up and do a bit of the kind of quote ugly work and maybe do things that are outside of your remit of expertise maybe you're good on sales all that kind of stuff you're going to increase your obviously your um possibility of being employed but in general it's a dogfight out there it really is it's hard it's difficult you just kind of keep on it like i was applying or looking at at least every day i couldn't apply every day because there weren't jobs available every day um but i was consistently um, looking just checking to make sure because um even though i have a decent amount of savings i was kind of specking stuff like that's a good thing about covid the great thing about covid has been for someone like myself who's always kind of operating on a day's notice right i never really fought further ahead than a, a day if anything i was kind of you know um uh that was sort of my claim to fame in that regard of how i handled everyday life but i found with covid and with the lockdown down it made me kind of relax sit down and maybe think a bit long term and when i specking out my savings i thought you know what i could obviously have this and be okay and survive until a year but i didn't want to be in a position where i was going to deplete all my savings i worked really hard to save up i wanted to still have a, a nice amount of income coming in and obviously with the ability to work remotely there wasn't really any risk or it wasn't really taken away from anything i was doing you know myself outside of work um that that i shouldn't go for it because that was the one thing that was kind of putting me off i was thinking if i go back 
back into full-time employment it's going to affect the things i'm going to do outside of work but you know what this is grown up time if it's going to affect the things i'm going to do outside of work it's going to affect it i just have to figure it out and make sure i find a solution that works best for me and go from there really there is no time to really kind of fuck around for lack of a better term sorry for the swearing and whatnot but yeah um finally got it secured again i, I think if i looked at a list of applications i must have sent over 100 it's been about a year i've just got a, a secured a role now and only in the last eight months or so did i finally get replies even from my application so if it's a bit dark out there for you and you're feeling a little bit bleak a little bit down don't be it's not just happening to you specifically it's happening to everybody out there it's hard it's a dog fight but you just have to wake up every day and just try your best to keep applying put yourself through the rigmarole go through the interviews all that kind of lucky and then i'm ho I'm, ho I'm hopeful um that you will find um a position for yourself as well and now that the world's reopening up again like i said i think it's more of a timing thing as well because i was consistently on it my momentum was building up and also the world reopened i think it's no coincidence that i've just secured a role now because again things are getting back to some semblance of normality companies are seeing you know that they still have gaps in there maybe um you know in the employee roster they still got position need to fill they've got work that needs to be you know i'm done and if you're ready and willing and able you'll get the gig but yeah that's been it so i'm over the moon for that as you can tell over the bloody moon